<laughs> okay, I did it. <laughs> he just admitted it. This is what I'm telling you. These young kids are just dumb as shit. Bruce Rivers, he's the criminal lawyer. Well, who is he? Bruce Rivers, he's the criminal lawyer. And who is he? Bruce Rivers, he's the criminal lawyer. And what he do? And he's gonna react to all the self snitching. Oh. Hi, this is Bruce Rivers. Welcome to another fun-filled episode of Criminal Lawyer Reacts. I'm Bruce Rivers, board-certified criminal defense lawyer, accompanied by our none other than the content genius that we know is Michael Rivers. S behind the camera as we speak, today we're reacting to a teen confession, and we'll talk a little bit more about the implications of that as we uh, proceed. But before we get to that, this is brought to you by ContractsCouncil.com, associated with uh, eSign.com. But ContractsCouncil.com, if you need a contract written for whatever, an agreement between you and another party, settlement agreement, a business agreement, any kind of bill of sale, anything you need that written up by a lawyer, you can go to ContractsCouncil.com and they can help you. Now, here's the deal. If you're a lawyer, and I know some of you are, I can tell by the comments that some of you are lawyers. If you're a lawyer and you want to do a little bit of work from home or a lot of bit of work from home, however much or little you want to do, we got a lot of clients, but we don't have a lot of lawyers. I mean, we have some lawyers, but uh, we need more. And because the demand right now is really high. So if you are a lawyer and you would like to get a little work, work done uh, and from the comfort of your own home, Go to ContractsCouncil.com, sign up, and you can make a little extra money and do it right from the comfort of your own home. And it's quality, quality, quality. That's because it's part of each sign. Okay, now, so here's the thing. I say that too much, don't I? So the beard has come in, and now I've trimmed it a little bit. <laughs> I'm talking about my beard. Isn't that stupid? The reason I'm talking about my beard is because I, I last time I grew one, Michael was four years old. I think he's 26 now. So that's, and I've only done it one other time. So it, I still look in the mirror and I see somebody different. So it's kind of weird. But today we're talking about teen confessions. Now let me tell you something about teenagers or children in general. Number one, they don't understand consequences. They don't understand that what I do right now is going to impact me tomorrow. Their frontal cortex is just not developed. They only see what's like right in front of them. So when you have a, a teenager that either commits a crime or is being interrogated by police. Now, I don't know if this is, I haven't seen this reaction, so I don't know if it's a confession or not. I, I assume it kind of is. Uh, and we do these cold reactions because I think you want to see my genuine response. So none of this is scripted and it's all due to our lovely content genius, Michael Rivers. But when you have a child or a teen I am not a fan of the death penalty for people who are under 18. I just am not. And they can commit heinous crimes, no question about it. And in certain circumstances, maybe an adult sentence is necessary, but not, not the death penalty and certainly not life without parole. Their, their brains are not developed. And it's been said that the male brain isn't developed until they're between 24 and 26 years old, somewhere in there. That's... So let's let's kind of watch this, and this is the the title of this one is "Teen Killer Thinks He's Going Home After Murdering His Mother." I mean that that tells you a lot right there. 17-year-old Carlos Hallowell from Citrus County was taken to police headquarters after making an urgent 911 call at 6:15 p.m. Citrus 911, He reported a terrifying scene. His mother, Denise Hallowell, lay in bed with an axe lodged in her head. Okay, axe lodged in her head. Holy shit. You know, I've had a case where I had a client who was... Um, in high school and plotted to kill his parents. He was adopted and uh, they owned a body shop. And my client, actually my client was his buddy, you know, and so they hatched this scheme, uh, conspiracy to basically kill two people. Teens are so wrought with emotion. You know, everything is a big deal. You know, you didn't make your daughter lunch, this, this, breakfast this morning, you know, and she can flip out at a dime. Not saying that it happened this morning, but you know, they, teens just have a different emotional temperature. And but to put an axe in your mother's head, I just think is is not decorum. Just 
Stay on the line with me, okay? Okay, 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 okay. okay. Emergency responders arrived to find a deeply distressed Carlos. His mother was unresponsive and was declared deceased at 6.50 p.m. Denise Hallowell adopted Carlos from Guatemala into... Okay, let's just talk about that for a second. You adopt a child, you think you're doing the absolute, you know, magnanimous, I, you know, giving of my heart, and all of a sudden he gives you an axe in the forehead. Fuck, I should never have adopted that kid. <laughs> Jesus Christ. 2006 when he was just four years old. She raised him on her own. Fast forward to July 13th, 2019. Both she and Carlos attended a family friend's funeral in St. Petersburg. After returning home to their secluded lakeside house, they shared apple pie in the kitchen before taking afternoon naps. Three hours later, Carlos was on the phone with 911. What was in that pie? It had to be the pie. I can't imagine it's anything but the pie. Denise was found face down on her bed, lifeless. The investigation has been classified as a homicide. To find... Okay, I'm just going to go on. Okay, there's causes of death here are, uh, you know, like you could have homicide, uh, suicide, or natural causes. Those are the, And all homicide means death at the hands of another. So an axe in the fucking forehead, of course, is going to be a homicide. I mean, could you kill yourself by... Doing this with an axe? I don't think so. Denise Hallowell's killer, the police are working swiftly to collect evidence before any leads fade. In the interrogation room, detectives question Carlos about what happened, as he was the last person to see his mother alive. Okay, before we get to what he's going to say. I mean, so, Carlos, um, I mean, how, how do you approach that? I, I think... You know, the best approach on something like that is as gentle and gingerly as possible. Uh, I hear barking from my side of the house, uh, which is abnormal. Our dogs are supposed to be in that little fenced-in area. Ooh, Carlos is uh, talking about a third person. Um, so, uh, the front door was wide open. So, I went to go find the dogs, checked around the property, looking for them. I couldn't find them, so I went to go wake my mom up and help me find them, and then... I found her there. So he's he's absolving himself of any guilt. It wasn't me. So what did you see when you walked in your mom's room? Um. Now here's why it's not good to self-snitch or give a statement. I don't know what physical evidence they have against him. I mean, a teenager is not smart enough to cover up something like this. You know, maybe they have some fingerprints on the ax handle. Uh, maybe they have her blood on him. Maybe they have uh, his DNA. Well, his DNA would be all over the house anyway. But, um, you know, his bloody footprints, you know, he, he's not gonna be smart enough to cover it up. It was our ax in uh, the side of my mom's school and I can still hear her. Uh, trying to the det look at the lack of emotion you know one of the things and I'm not going to say this is uh, true of, of generally one of the things that is, is common uh, among adopted children is that they can sometimes have attachment disorder especially if they're adopted later in age because if they've been moved around moved around moved around and they're not held and they're not uh, nurtured when they're young like really young, like a baby, they can develop this attachment disorder. And when you develop attachment disorder, you, you can have this like this like opaque thing between you and, and other people where you just don't give a shit. You don't, you don't have that empathy. You don't have that connection with other people. I don't know if that's the case here, but it, it is common. Detectives are currently uncertain about the situation. They must quickly uncover the events that transpired in the house. Simultaneously, they need to approach the situation with caution to avoid causing additional trauma to the young man who has lost his mother. My mom and I have, and we've been through a lot together, so, I mean, there's nothing I wouldn't do for her or anything, so. To her or for her? I mean, if he's responsible for the axe in the fucking head, they didn't have the greatest relationship. I'm just going out on a limb and saying that. I just don't know what happened. Obviously, you 
you know, we're not looking at an accidental situation here, right? I don't know. She uh, woke up and she just had the axe in her head. Somebody put an axe in the back of her head. Who would have done that? I don't know anybody. All my mom's close friends, anything would make me touch her. And look at the lack of... I mean, he had emotion when he called 911. I mean, just panic, it sounded like. But in, in the room with the detective, he's cold and detached. This is the only people I know. She don't have any enemies. That I know of. She would. Kept to herself. So you guys are kind of out there in the middle. Yeah, we're in nowhere. The, yeah, we're in the middle of nowhere. We just keep to ourselves. We put signs up because we've had small intruders and then we hear noises at night. So she just puts all that stuff up for safety. So, I don't know. She hasn't had any problems with anybody? Not that I know of. She, she also stays private for me as well. I only need to, I only know what I need to know. Carlos is remarkably composed for someone who has just discovered their mother deceased with an ax in her head. <laughs> And also composed for somebody who just put an axe in the back of his mother's head. <laughs> the detectives already view this as suspicious. For now, the detectives are focused on the facts and are working through Carlos's version of events in fine detail. If his story can be verified, Citrus County Police will have the confidence to focus elsewhere. You guys walk in, you guys have pie. What did you guys have pie at? Right on the dinner table. Dinner table. As a plate, silverware, or what? No, we just eat right out of the, right out of the box. We just eat a slice, save everything. Just, we're used to kind of living paycheck to paycheck as a teacher and being a single parent. So we make things last, and she doesn't get paid for this. Gotcha. So now it's funny that he says that because it is one of the things that teens don't get. They don't get that there's an endless pot of money somewhere. You know that you know they don't get where the money comes from. They don't, but they do know limitations, right? You're not going to that party. Fuck you! I'm going to that party. You know, I want I want an Xbox. Oh yeah, I can't afford it. Fuck you know, slam the door. You know that kind of stuff. And it's funny that he brings that up because I bet that was the source of consternation between the two of them. Because we live in this culture where the, where especially when if you look at what the young kids watch, the young kids, I'm an old guy. Um, if you look at what they watch, you know, look at all the videos that we've reacted to. Where you got the fucking bling, you got the the necklaces, you got the cars, you got the, and when they, and when you have limits like this, living paycheck to paycheck, you're not you're not living that life. And Michael just made a good point. Um, with the barrage of social media, they're constantly checking in, and everything they see is a measure against themselves, really, when you think about it. Where does your self-esteem come from when you're a teenager? It comes from without, not necessarily from within, which sucks because it's a false, it's a, it's a false notion of, of what you should be, right? And so that whole social media thing has really taken a toll, I think, on our teens. So when you get a guy like this and he's checking in on Instagram or you know Facebook or wherever, and he's measuring his life against his his peers, who might who are showing like fun vacations or showing you know cars or this or that, and they're in the middle of nowhere living paycheck to paycheck. So you guys are gone at the dining table. What do you guys do with pies? Uh, put them in the fridge and then you party ways. We both decided to take our naps. She went into her room, I went into mine. And I just, I watched a couple of things on YouTube and fell asleep and got up again and texted people and fell back to sleep. Usually we stay in there for about two or three hours to give ourselves time. It's our own separate time throughout the day. So you don't know if she left to go anywhere else or something? I don't. Um, I usually don't know. I have a sleeper and I sleep on that side of the house. Her car is where the garage is, so I usually can't hear it. Right? Where do I know? I usually have something planned in the background to help me fall asleep. Mm -hmm. Do you remember at any time what time you went to bed or took a nap? No. I, I, the only thing I remember was waking up to the, the dog barking next to my room, which was odd. Did you try to give your mom any type of aid? I, I didn't know what to do. I just shook her. It wasn't responsive. It said just breathing. I, I don't know what to do. And I didn't want to do something stupid or 
taking it off. She needs a death or something. Detectives now believe that Carlos isn't being truthful. Given the severity of Denise's injury, it's implausible that she could still be breathing, as Carlos claimed. Now, whether she was breathing or not, that would be something that a uh, medical examiner would... Um, geez, look at that. I don't know. That's it, really deep in there. <laughs> Holy shit. God, I mean, and if it's just one blow, you know, I mean, you he's got to be pissed off. I mean... By that time, she would likely have already passed away. Investigators are now pressing Carlos for a thorough account of the events leading to his mother's death. So your mom went to her room and now came out and went back to her room again? Yeah, she does that all the time. She'll get up, get tea, she'll get up, get water, do whatever. And she doesn't always sleep, deep sleep like I do. She's a rest. Now, remember one of the things that we've talked about, like in, in uh, JCS videos, we talked about peripheral details that just don't matter. You know, when somebody's lying, they talk about a lot of different things that just don't matter. As if to provide more details about something, everything but, then it seems to like make them more credible. She's a restless sleep when she hears everything, so she'll always get up. The store is changing as we keep going. It just keeps changing and changing. We went from, what she, went, about she went to, you heard her. Okay. You said you went to your world. I'm confused. You say you went to your room, yes. you closed your door, right. you heard your mom walk to her room and close her door. Right, she was doing and what she wanted to do. Yes, she was doing what she wanted to do, and then I went to sleep. So then how you know she came out and went back in? That was before I went to sleep. I'm saying that I went to my room, closed my door, and I hear my mom doing what she normally does, goes to her room, and then she needs something, water, she usually gets water. Came out, got water, she went back to her room, and never heard it up again. So I went to sleep. Carlos's account has shifted within minutes. Initially, he claimed he went to his room and didn't hear anything due to background noise. Now he mentions hearing his mom leave the room to get water. So this is why you don't talk to the police. I mean, this is because he hasn't had enough time to rehearse his bullshit. And so then he gets tripped up. And it's not hard to trip up a teenager. Trust me, it ain't hard. So you don't know if she left to go anywhere else or something? I don't. Um, I usually don't know. Uh, I have a sleeper and I sleep on that side of the house. Her car is where the garage is. So I usually can't hear it, nor, nor do I know. I usually have something playing in the background. His narrative is inconsistent, and it seems he's attempting to backtrack. When someone is speaking the truth, details are often clear and consistent. Conversely, when someone is lying, they might struggle to keep their story straight, leading to inconsistencies or added embellishments. Such discrepancies are clear warning signs for detectives. So her room should have a cup of water? I don't know what she got, I don't know. I, I was in my room, so I, I have no idea. That's just her usual routine. This is going off of what she normally does, her everyday thing. Her normal routine, but what, what did you actually hear? Because you, you can say I can normally tie my shoes, but, you know, I don't mean I really had tied my shoes. She, well, she just went into the kitchen. I, I usually I usually know she gets water because she gets dehydrated. And sometimes she doesn't bring it with her, so she'll drink it there. So she'll have her water cup next to her uh, medicine. Yeah, interesting. And there's no cup of water by her bed. She'll just get a drink and go back to bed or do whatever. She'll get tea. I, I don't know because I'm in my red water water is what kind of. It's, a, it's, it's in a jug. We, we fill our water. And we keep them in the fridge. We'll step out for a bit. Say this real quick. No about 50 minutes into the interview, both detectives step out of the interrogation room, leaving Carlos Hallowell alone. Now, keep in mind, I don't know that he's in custody. So... They do, if you're not in custody, you don't have to be Mirandized. However, one could argue that this is kind of a quasi-custodial situation. He's in a closed room with police, and they're asking him questions. Is he free to go, or is he not free to go? We didn't see the beginning of the interview. But if he's under arrest, and I don't suspect that they had probable cause to arrest him at that point, but they needed to talk to him. So at some point, he's not free to go. 
And if he's not free to go, that turns into a custodial interrogation, which requires what? Miranda. That means that's the warning. You have the right to have a lawyer present, blah, blah, blah. And at any point, he can end the interrogation. And one of the things that they do is they'll leave the room after talking to somebody for a little bit and say, you know, we have to go do something real quick. And then they'll watch him. They'll let him sit. And sometimes they'll make spontaneous utterances or they'll do or say crazy things that uh, are contradictory to what their claim of innocence is. After a roughly 20-minute break, the detectives return to the interrogation room armed with fresh details. They've learned that several months earlier, Carlos had been reported to the authorities for assaulting his mother, striking her. What did I tell you? What did I tell you? They didn't have that great a relationship. And I'm sure it's because he was sick and tired of living in a shitty house with a shitty car and not, have, and not being able to afford decent clothes or the kind of clothes that he wanted and not recognizing that this mother um, went out of her way and maybe for selfish reasons, maybe she wanted to have a child and couldn't have one or whatever, but she, she opened up her home, opened up her life, opened up her heart to this child, but it wasn't the life that he wanted. ...her with such force that her arm was broken. Fucking broke the arm? Guess what? You're going to a home. You are not living with me any fucking more. You're going to a juvenile facility. See you later. Not too long ago, you guys got into a little domestic. The cops were called. The domestic? No, no. My mom and I sorted that out. That was completely gotten out of hand. And then my mom overreacted, I overreacted when we talked about it after it happened. And, you know, so I fucking broke her arm. It was her fault anyway. I mean, give me a break. After I was out of the house. Right. Was that before you left or after? Before. before. And I was, wasn't doing well in school. And then we got into the argument. And she showed limits it's limits you don't want any fucking limits when you're a kid you know you, oh, you're you're not doing well in school okay you're not gonna play football fuck you i'm not gonna play football but you know your life in your in your social interactions your phone your social media you know all the shit that you do with your friends is everything as a teenager everything nothing else matters and it's and so I can see how this would spiral out of control. Not like this. This is not normal to fucking put an axe in the back of your mom's head. It just isn't. I showed up back and forth, stuff like that. Right. It wasn't any, anything physical. It was just like... It wasn't anything physical. I just broke her damn arm. <laughs> get out of my face. You get out of my face. Get out of my face. This is just got yelling, 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 yelling. It wasn't going anywhere. Right. She used to hit me pretty hard. Um, sometimes in the face. Mostly in the back, with just anything she could grab. That was it. She had like a special bat or a stick or something. Or anything. No. Just for that. How about an axe? Did she have an axe that she tried to put in the back of your head? Didn't think so. No. It was just anything that was close by. If it was my keys, she'd put me with my keys and that's it. And then after the years, I just kind of took it because it's not really going to stop. But my mom's always been there for me still. So. Is that the reason why you moved out? Uh, yeah. Um, after I defended myself, I kind of had enough of it. After I defended myself against this woman, and maybe if she was abusive, who knows? And that and that can happen. You know, that can happen where you're abused by a parent, and you just have had too much of it, and you go off. I mean, I've seen they had a case where my client was a son of a cop. And this cop had beat my client from the day he was born. And one day he just had enough of it and said, you're, you're done. And he blew him away. And got a manslaughter charge out of it instead. <laughs> I mean, you've heard about battered spouse syndrome where, you know, a woman is, is beaten, you know, through the course of a relationship and she just snaps and, and has had enough of it. I mean, that's a real thing. I don't suspect that's what we're having here because he is so, you know, the people who are like that, are, you know, in those really, they're still attached to the person. And, and he seems so detached here. He, he doesn't seem remorseful at all. He doesn't seem even sad that his mom is dead. You're talking about the keys deal? Yes. That was kind of like the last straw deal. That was. And she wanted me out. And I officially moved out. She wanted me out. 
you know, it's tough to, to take that stance with a child. I mean, it's tough to, to put that barrier because you develop this bond, this a bond where you would give your life for your child. But all of a sudden, if they act like this and they break your arm, um, what are you going to do? Especially if you're a single mother that can't handle, you know, a strong uh, young man like this. After he broke his mother's arm, which he claims was in self-defense, he left the house and stayed with friends for several months. During this period, he began taking medication for depression and started to stabilize. Only then did she let him return home. My mom finally got yeah. me on antidepressants. Same those? Prozac, yes. Take them every day. Mm -hmm. What did the doctor say that he was uh, lying over with depression? Carlos claims that he and his mother patched things up and that he was welcomed home with open arms. It with a, well, kind of like this, you know, because we have a broken arm. Reality, Denise was terrified of him. She had CCTV installed because of his behavior. She didn't trust him and feared he might hurt her again. Carlos, how often do you think it is that somebody's sitting in their house taking a nap or anything like that situation? And some stranger comes in and, and kills them. Well, it, it, it happens almost every day in my neighborhood. I mean, you know, for her to go to those lengths of installing cameras in her house to protect her from him is really telling. But the question that he just asked, how, you know, the, the, how often is it a situation where the stranger comes in and kills somebody? like almost never we had a case in our office my office partner did and it was a 12 year old unsolved homicide it didn't get charged out right away but the, the claim there was uh somebody broke in he tells his wife to go call the police and so she she calls 911 and then she gets shot while she's calling 911 and then he supposedly gets shot too but there's absolutely no evidence of, a, of an intruder none whatsoever and he wound up getting life without but it's really rare that some random person is just going to come into your house and uh and kill you <laughs> it's just if that was the case we all have like fortresses wouldn't we i mean it's not the purge i don't know but i will say this i hope you're not insinuating i would do this because that she adopted me from four she has been my mother has been by my side what my, what my inference was is that that rarely ever happens. Okay. That rarely ever happens. And what I'm trying to lead to is that it, what 99.9% .9 of the time, it's a family member okay. or a close friend. 99.9%? .9 so you say I have a chance. <laughs> or you don't know anybody. Or lover or something like that. As the interview progresses, Carlos becomes increasingly unsettled. He has slowly realized that he has gone from being seen as a vulnerable child who has just lost his mother to a prime suspect in the investigation. So I don't know what you guys are trying to get out of me right now, but I didn't do anything and would never do anything to my mother like that. As much as we, as we used to bicker and, and get back at each other, fighting sometimes, and then peace, and then back, back and forth, and then peace again, never. Never in a million years would I ever think to do that. She's my mom. I was adopted at age four, and I've been with her forever. And if you're insinuating that, I'm very offended by that. Carlos remains. Well, I'm sorry we offended you. Go on your way, please, and and uh, here's here's the axe. Remained calm and confident throughout the interrogation, presenting a composed demeanor. However, when faced with direct accusations, he begins to show signs of anger and concern. Emotions one might have expected to see from the very beginning. You're putting out a pretty good show. A show? Yeah, you're putting out a really good show. A show? Yeah. How's this a show? I remember the whole interviews with you back when all this went down. You, you remember that? Yeah, I was, I was in charge of the major crimes unit then. Okay. So, and I remember the CPT talking about how your attitude of, of things were very sociopathic. Sociopathic, which is exactly what you're showing me right now. That's what I was kind of getting at with the attachment disorder. It's a sociopathic kind of thing. And a sociopath is someone... Um, so there's various levels of um, sociopath, psychopath. 
And and what identifies somebody as a sociopath is somebody who wants to get what they want and they'll hurt other people and it doesn't fucking phase them at all. They don't give a shit. And and that's what I see here. And I do agree with the cop in, this, in that regard. You know, my mom's dead. I'm, I'm bawling my eyes out. He, he doesn't have one ounce of a tear. There's something missing there. There's a human component that's missing. He's not even fucking nervous that the cops are, are questioning him now. I mean, he's more pissed off. And he, but he's not nervous, and he's not crying. And you're trying to act like you're upset about something. Trying? Yeah. Okay, how is he trying? That was my mom. My mother. Yeah. Right? So trying. How is this trying? Because you don't feel like normal people feel. I don't feel like normal people feel. Yeah, that's what a sociopath has the issues with. Okay, so, you're, to, so you're calling me. Isn't so if I'm the lawyer for this case, I, I I would I would move to exclude this part because the cop is not equipped to diagnose somebody as a sociopath. He's probably right, but he's he's not. It's not appropriate. Yeah. Really. Yeah. This is what sociopaths do. We'll do what? I, I've just been sizing you up the whole time. Okay. It's like 100. percent Okay. You can size you me don't, up. You don't have normal feelings. You can size me up all you want. I do have normal feelings. I loved my mom. Ask anybody, anybody in this town. Ask the surgeon who uh, reset her arm. I mean, <laughs> fuck it. We're going to release you to DCF, and DCF's going to have to figure out where you go. Okay. When am I being released to DCF? Uh, I think I just told it, DCF is probably a Department of Children and Family Services. I told you it takes a little while. You know, I had another client years ago he, all he did was smoke weed and play video games that's all he did and he didn't want to uh, go to school he didn't want to do anything and so the parents kicked him out and now he's he was selling all his shit he was down to selling his Xbox so what's he going to do rather than go get a fucking job pardon my French uh, rather than go get a job he decided okay well I'm just going to uh unalive or kill him, kill his parents that's what he was going to do he was going to and so he goes in and, and he thought okay then i'll inherit their property and then i'll open a weed shop in in amsterdam i mean this is what i'm talking about the cortex is just not firing on all cylinders and so he goes into the house shoots his mother and his dad jumps out of a window after he does that, and his dad survived. And the guy went to prison for the rest of his life. How ridiculous is that? I mean, what a ridiculous scheme, just like this. It is just the, the cortex, the, the brain is just not fully developed. But that doesn't mean that just because you're not fully developed that you, sh that you have license to do you know whatever it is because you're just not developed it's it's a reason you know without excuse is what i'm guess what i'm getting at it's but he does have these tendencies that are just awful all right so i it's gonna be a bit the police don't have enough evidence to hold carlos any longer especially since he is a 17 year old minor detectives couldn't conclusively link carlos to his mother's murder so they were forced to send him home. Hello. Hi. Hello. How are you? Hi. As they searched for definitive proof, Carlos took to social media to grieve and invite friends to her memorial. He received numerous comforting responses during his period of sorrow. And this is the kind of thing that can ultimately do you in getting on social media and all of a sudden. The detective started by telling him that there were inconsistencies in his account. Well, I was just from the I came in a days later, so I'm still. So I don't know what they have at this point. Now it's nine weeks later. I don't know what they have at this point, but he's already given a statement. Why would you, why would you talk to them at all? And, and why wouldn't he have a lawyer at this point? Probably because he didn't have any money. Catching up on some of the stuff we've had, I should. 
you hear her in the backyard at all. You just went, in, went inside, seen your mom. Your phone was already on you at that point? Yeah. It's like always, it's easy. Okay. And then you walked outside mm-hmm. and called 911. I called, I called when I was there. I was in the room when I called. Okay. On your phone itself, it also tracks your GPS location. So you can track your entire track where you are. Because you're on the phone 911 for a few minutes, correct? So it tracks everywhere you went. It says you were down by the lake here. So what? At that time, while you were in that whole time frame from when you called 911 on. I didn't go down by the lake. I could see it, but I didn't go down there. Right, you know we have a dive team, right? And then we searched the entire lake behind it. Have we found anything out there, you think? Uh oh. Uh oh. I guess we didn't think about that. Nothing else? Not that I know of, or that I'm going to tell you. Probably old hooks, fishing poles. The detective unveils a box filled with evidence. Immediately, one can... We have a surprise box for you. Now let's uh, see what's behind box number one. One can see that Carlos is feeling a surge of anxiety. Uh-oh, look at all these fucking bags of evidence. Oh, man. I hate to see... You know, here's the thing. I know I make light of this, and, and we're, we're talking... But it's part of what I do, you know, is we see so much bad stuff that you have to have kind of a sense of humor about it. We know that somebody died here. We know that it's it's a, uh, you know, a mother who is probably loving it, from what I can see. and we, but, we, but we have a, a little shithead teenager who thought he was smarter than everybody else, and... I have to agree with the cop who, who exhibits some kind of sociopathic behaviors. Come here, both of you. I know it's turning apart. Is that the camera that's hanging up? That was outside? Yeah, it's facing towards the... Oh, he got rid of the cameras. Huh. You know what we call that? Consciousness of guilt. See, I'm looking for you. Yes, sir. You're in the small cameras you sit in the house? Yeah, yeah just look. So okay, then, yeah, it's one of the ones that facing towards the... Upon inspecting his phone, the detective discovered that Carlos was near the lake when he phoned the police. So, why would he be near the lake? Contradicting his claim of being in Denise's room. This prompted further investigation into his activities at the lake leading them to deploy a diving team for an exhaustive search. Shortly thereafter, detectives found Denise's disconnected CCTV cameras and her mobile phone discarded in the lake behind the Hallowell residence. Your mom's phone, down by the lake. Three cameras, down by the lake. Okay. You see how this is stacking? I, I understand. I understand. But I'm still... And all I can help you is if you come up front and say, we got a fight, there's a total accident, something like that. But that's what happened. The only way I can help you is if you admit to the crime. How senseless does that make? I want a lawyer. I want a lawyer right now. But that's what happened. Then tell me the truth. I need to know that because I can't help you without that. Right. Because without that, it's just something. Okay. How are you going to help me? I I can't help you without that. How are you going to help? You're not going to help me. You're going to f me as hard as you possibly can without lube and dry. Horrible got done, and you don't care about it. Well, no, I definitely do care about it. I'm, I'm fairly pissed. It's just. I'm fairly it's pissed. Not, it's like, how I follow you on the time? I understand. I didn't shoot before pretty much today. I understand. I understand. But I don't. There's nothing that happened where we got in the fight. There was nothing at all. That's the thing. And here's the, here's the thing about that statement right there. That takes away any heat of passion. That takes away any kind of uh, mitigating circumstances. There's no fight at all. You know, she wasn't trying to put an axe in the back of my head, so I put one in hers. It was a perfectly good day. We were fine. I don't remember anything bad going on that day. It was all just okay. What we're trying to get at, now, like I said, we're, it's been about two months, a little over two months. I think so. We've been working as a little chocolate. One of the things that he probably thought of when they released him is I'm in the clear. But, number one, there's no statute of limitations on murder. Murder cases are, there's just no statute of limitations. 
so they can take their sweet time investigating and accumulating evidence. But the but nine weeks to a teenager is an eternity. Um, I don't remember what happened though from when like dogs uh, from the dogs barking to finding them. And once I found my mom, I, I did panic. I did panic very cold, like really bad, because mom's there, panics, and just grabs one that's facing the facing the front door. I grab the phone and I grab the thing. The one that was up there. I knew about that. I used the phone to say that, but it ended up being mine. I thought that it was. I dumped them in the lake. Why the why the hell would you do that? Why would you? I mean, the first thing I would do instead of rendering aid is I'd get a, rid of any cameras or her cell phone or anything that would kind of put me there, um, putting the axe in the back of her head. And then I called either before or after that. You go watch someone throw cameras and cell phone. Well, of course, to hide, to hide it. But I completely panicked. I mean. Why would you panic about that? I know, because you're an axe murderer. How many times did you have Mother Lake? I think it was once. You lost the phone and the three cameras out? Yeah. Okay. I didn't know what was, if I did it or if what happened to the person. So you don't remember if you did it? No, I don't. You see what it looks like, though, right? Yes, I do. <laughs> Okay, now he doesn't remember. That's not what he said initially. He gave a full account of uh, where things were at. There's only one reason. Only one reason. And had they not had the GPS location, he, you know, you could say, I, I didn't do that, but, but they had him. And now he's coughed up the, probably the biggest part of the case. Did you realize that I need more than that? I mean, I, it doesn't make any sense to do that. I do. I, I know. I understand. And I, I just don't know. I don't remember whatsoever what happened, what really happened between when I woke up to that. But your phone doesn't really show you to Police now reveal to Carlos that his mobile phone data shows he never took a nap, contrary to his initial statement. Now, how can you say that? How can you say he never took a nap? Well, if you have your phone on you, and most people have their phone on them 24-7, you know, unless they're sleeping or whatever. If your phone is stationary, it, it'll, it'll record that. And it'll record it how? By the lack of recording. In other words... When you're walking with your phone, it records where you go and what you, you know, not what you do, but records where you go. Records your steps, even. If you look at your phone, you can say, oh, how many steps have I done today? And it records your G GPS location constantly. That's, one, that's the world we live in today. And so if they can say that he, he, your phone was never at rest, well, then you're lying about taking a nap. And now you don't remember anything between taking a nap and this and that. With his entire story now dismantled, he decides to tell the truth. Okay, what happened? What happened? I remember being outside at the shed and grabbing the axe. But oh, now you grabbed the axe. <laughs> Moron, your bus is for prison is leaving. God, look at that thing. Why would you do that? It's just such ugliness, such violence, such ugliness. To a woman that just did nothing but love him. And maybe she was a pain in the ass. But doesn't mean that you put an axe in the back of her head. And this is a message to all you teens out there. Hopefully there's some teenagers watching. And I can just tell you this. There is no problem that can be solved with an axe that can't be solved with words. Okay? I mean, it's simple as that. No problem is that big that you need to, to go to violence... There's no problem that can be solved with violence that can't be solved with words. Period. End of story. Be kind to the people that, that are next to you. 
You know, look at Michael and I. I mean, we have this close, close, close relationship. We love each other. There's anything I would do, wouldn't do for him. I would just give my life for him. Not like this, <laughs> but but I just love him to death. And uh, well, I shouldn't say to death, um, but you get what I'm saying. You know, there's no problem that can be solved with violence that can't be solved with words. And, and you know what? And working through a conflict peacefully brings you out on the other side closer, quite honestly. That's a, that's a which is why okay i can remember getting the axe but that's all i can remember i also did because i remember the last thing i did was grab the axe i don't remember plunging it into the back of my mom's head i just you know and, and getting sprayed with blood i just I, okay i remember that part but i don't remember what i did after i mean come on there's no doubt that you did it's just why right right that's what i'm saying i, I want to know that too <laughs> okay i did it he <laughs> just admitted it this is what I'm telling you. These young kids are just dumb as shit. No offense. Because I remember sharpening the axe. Oh, I remember sharpening the axe. I mean, what? I, this is premeditated, first degree, cold blooded murder from hell. I mean, he sharpened the axe. Okay, this isn't, you know, I'm, uh, I'm just outraged. This is, let's see. Oh, here it is right here. I'm going to kill my mother. I'm going to kill her. You know, I mean, that's what this is. Oh, my God. I remember sharpening the axe. Oh, my God. Look at that. Look at that fucking axe in, the, in her head. Oh, my God. Is that awful? That is just awful. And I know I'm laughing, but I'm laughing at the outrageousness of the conduct here. Huh. Oh, jeez. It's, and it's not a hat. It looks like a hat almost. But it's an axe through and through into her skull. I mean, it almost doesn't look real. But that's her um, x-ray. So did you do right after you and you sharpen the axe? You walk in the house with that afterwards? I just don't need to know because i got to be definite on this. I don't like it. I don't have an exact memory of it, so I don't want to say. Yes, you do. You have a distinct memory of it. You remember, you don't remember anything after, but I remember sharpening the fucking axe. Yeah, give me a break. Uh, best of my memory, I uh, walked in the house with the axe with, with not the intent of. Oh no, I was sharpening it. I was carrying it from the shed. I was walking into the house. I was just gonna slice some apples and I slipped. Do it now. I don't know. If I don't know if something was said. Please don't hit me with the axe. That's probably what was said. Oh my God, come on. Oh. Because um, usually I try to talk to her and say, hey mom, get up. Hey mom, get up or I'm gonna put an axe in your head. Hey mom, mm -hmm. so I don't know if I did that and she made a remark that kind of pushed me over the edge or if it just. Yeah, it's her fault. She pushes you over the edge. Come on. I'll play through. So after you hit her with the axe, is that when you call 911 right after? Immediately. Immediately. Right after you hit her? Right after. I went, bam. Boom. I went, bam. I mean, he... he <laughs> Ugh. Boom. 911. Check your breathing pulse. Um, but as soon as I saw blood running through, I was like, there was nothing I could do. So then I was just... You feel better now? It's off your chest? A little bit. I still feel like a piece of... Would you like to go to McDonald's and get some chicken nuggets, maybe a Happy Meal? After confessing to the murder of his mother, the investigators were still puzzled about the motive. She was very verbally abusive. And I remember, um, I do remember being in tears by the time they had that conversation. And she backed it up with like, strong adjectives and then strong emotions. Of, like, I'm so disappointed in you, which I've heard that before. Okay, uh, I'm disappointed in you. You better not say that again, or I'm going to put an axe in your head. I mean... And then she's like, beat him. Nah, it's fine. It's like, okay, jump. Mm -hmm. And then she kept going, keep going, keep going, keep going. When I'm punching something, mm -hmm. or I'm using the axe, mm -hmm. or whatever, it's, I, I play the things that my mom's has done, and I just get the frustration out of that. I'm like, okay, mom said this. I visualize what she said in a paragraph. I just beat Although Carlos explained why he killed his mother, 
he still seemed disconnected from the severity of his actions. How long are we going to be here? How long are we going to be here? I don't know, probably for the rest of your natural life. You're going to our jail here and transfer for Kala. To jail? Yeah. The jail here is just for processing. You're in DJJ with Kala. Uh, I don't have a record now. I'm gonna have a record now. <laughs> yeah, probably gonna have a record. You can't up with that. But you have a reason for that? Well, no, I mean, like, is there any way of getting expunged? Like, expunged later. You expect your, your murder can be. You're not gonna have to worry about it because you'll be employable in the uh, 25 cents an hour market, you know, in the prison job system. I just hope that um, it doesn't really affect too much because we're still in yeah. college. Oh, I don't, I, I don't want my murder confession to really affect too much. Because you know, I really, I want to go to college. I want to be free to axe murder again. Carlos Hallowell was charged with premeditated first-degree murder. Sharpening the axe was, was, that's called premeditation right there. Sharpen the axe. He was not eligible for the death penalty due to his age, but he was tried as an adult. In July 2021, Carlos Hallowell was found guilty of the first-degree murder of his adopted mother. Okay, now look on his neck. Look on his neck. It says loyalty on his neck. And, uh... Denise, and was sentenced to life in prison without the possibility. So he's got, you know, two crosses and he's got loyalty tattooed on his, on his neck. And my guess it's probably loyalty to whatever prison gang he's involved with because he's there for life and so he's going to have to live his life in prison. And it's just sad. It's just sad. Sad that this woman thought she was doing the right thing by adopting her murderer. Can you believe that? I mean, think about that. That's exactly what she did. When the kid was four years old, she adopted her murderer. I just don't know how, you know, your brain gets so scrambled that all of a sudden you do something like this. But it, it, it was over time that he developed this hatred for his mother and contempt really is what it is. And, and then he just, without, I mean, he planned to kill her, but didn't have any plans afterwards. So it wasn't really a well thought out murder because he was 17. Anyway, this has been our reaction to Carlos and his uh, ill-fated plan to kill his mother and that he did kill her. So word to every fucking teenager out there, word to every one of you, and, and you know what, to everybody, honestly. There's no problem that can be solved with violence that can't be solved with words and love. You know, if you find that you really are hating somebody, either excise them from your life or find something good in them and, and love them. You know, you can, you can find love somewhere in, in the people around you. And that's the message for today is love somebody and don't put an ax in somebody's head <laughs> so we'll see you next time here at criminal lawyer reacts i'm bruce rivers make sure you subscribe follow us on instagram follow us on twitter sign up for patreon and we'll see you next time here on criminal lawyer reacts I'm part of bruce rivers just broke down your case he know all the charges that you about to face you ain't coming home till 2058 that self snitching gonna get you put away bruce rivers just broke down your case he know all the charges that you about to face You ain't coming home till 2058 That self-snitching gon' get you put away 23 hour lockdown, please is that my god